Hey, it's Joe Glines from The Automator. Today we're going to cover this bash.dll file I found in the forum and a link to it about recording. You can allow you to record audio uh, using AutoHotKey in this bash DLL file. So uh, let me go ahead and switch over to there. Please like and subscribe uh, or comment. But let's go ahead and show my desktop. Now, uh, I found the original script. Let's see, where is it? Right here on the forum which I'll, I'll put, you know, this will be available in the file. You can go to here and grab the DLL, the bass.dll file, but I'm going to go ahead and include it in, in the download for this. Hopefully it doesn't change too much, but yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. And you can get this file and all the files here at the automator slash bass. So I'll make that available. Now let's zoom in here a little bit. I'm going to walk through this uh, just a little bit, uh, at least the stuff I understand. Now, I made some changes to it because I didn't care for some of the stuff, which I'll explain along the way. So the file name, they had hard coded it sort of, but had it multiple places and had it being deleted, but they didn't use a variable, which is really weird because this script is very advanced to me. It's, it's pretty advanced. And yet they sometimes did stuff with variables and sometimes didn't. Uh, I also found out that, hey, I can change this extension like to an MP3 or a WAV or an OGG or AIF, and it seems to be recording in that format, which is really cool, right? You just change the extension, it records in that format. This is awesome. Uh, now, one of the things that's a little, uh, I, what I also didn't like was it depends on where the uh, the version, the bitness of auto hotkey that you're using, and if you know, if you're not too sure about this, I have a good function, this run with function, which is actually at the bottom of my script down here, which again, this will be in this file, so you don't have to go grab that. But it allows you to force the bitness that AutoHockey is going to run it in. So here, I'm forcing it to be 32-bit. Now, the 32-bit version is in, let me bring over, for me, I put it in this folder. So here's the Bass DL. Now, it's in the normal one. However, if you see this X64, that's where the 64-bit version is. So if you want to run that one, you could replace, you know, bring the 64-bit one up here and replace this one or, or, you know, create a 32 and then move that or something. Uh, what I did is I force it to run in 32-bit. I have 32-bit installed, so technically I don't need this, but I still like to have that there. And then I tell it, here's my bass DLL path, right? It's in the script directory where I am, slash bass dll and then later you'll notice in the script i reference this let's see where's here we go there's several references i think there's a few more and they didn't do that and so if you were using a different location again really weird very advanced script and yet they didn't store it in one spot and then reuse it which is really weird to me now if again if i wanted to change this to 64 i can change this to 64 and here i have a little note to myself right it's it's this one so I would just add this part at the beginning like that, because that's the path. It's the script directory slash 64 slash bass DLL. So very simple. Um, I'm going to change it back just because I keep it at 32, which is fine. All right. Now I added a accelerator key to the start and the stop, but I kind of cheated on the stop just FYI because I don't work with GUIs a lot. And I, they had used this thing and made it a really big GUI. Let me launch it so you see the the GUI. So right now it's not recording because right now this is just main. Oh boy. Apparently I need to make this a little bigger so I can move it. So maybe I'll change that before I share it. Uh, let's change it right now, right? Let's say the, the width is 230. There we go. Now I can move it. Great. Uh, I probably work on making these wider or something. So we could hit start or stop. I don't know. understand why my accelerator keys are suddenly not that was interesting. Why were they not underlined? Anyway, I don't know, but I don't want to start and stop right now. I want to keep walking through the script, then we'll demo it. And let's see. So here, there's a there's a bunch of stuff I don't understand, and I don't care to. I know I'm I'm writing. This is writing a header. I, I've used the file object before. Uh, it's going through and doing some stuff and setting some really interesting things. They also, whoever wrote this, with some of the things they did, it was just beyond me, but they wrote it in a way where they had things on multiple, li several lines, and they were like this FM type colon equals. They had FM type equals zero on one line, and then another line, and then something else. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to flatten flatten some of these things out here just a little bit, uh, just to, to make it a little more concise. Again, I don't know what I'm doing, but it works, so that's fine. We're going to go in here. Okay, it gets down to here, hits return. This, so that is the, you know, the start record functionality. Uh, and somewhere up in here, right in here, register, 
oh, registers a callback record function. This jumps down to the record function and gets this kind of handle and is watching for it. I think it has up to do with the streaming, but I'm not sure. Again, I don't care, right? But I'm trying to point out things that you need to know how to use it. Uh, so when you hit Alt-T, it'll stop the record. And here I kind of flatten some of these things again. Here's a good example of this is where I'm like, well, wait a minute, data size equals, why don't I just put that? And when I first tried to do it, uh, I'm not gonna do it right now. Uh, let me do the test and then we'll see if I can adapt it. But what I did was I brought it in here and just kind of flattened it a bit. But when I put it in this way, it didn't work because see, this is a re this is an expression. And so it's not actually setting it to equal zero, but that's where I'm like, I don't understand if it's not doing it, why can't I put it here? But if I do the colon equals there, it seems to work. So. And actually, this this UINT, that's what I read up on up above. You'll see the UNITs, it got changed. Well, you won't because I took them out. But the this right UINT, that was where I, I read on the little notes on the forum that, hey, you can you can swap those out and use this right UINT straight away and put in the number. So you see this right UNT and, and the number several times. That and the other version took up multiple lines. And so I think we can go ahead and replace that other one later. I'll go ahead and worry about that in a bit. And then I also added after it's written and done, run the file name and exit the app. So, all right, so let's go ahead and kick this off again. Here we go, start. And this should come through in the auto here. So I'm recording. Wow, that's amazing listening to myself. Stop. I'm recording. Wow, that's amazing listening to myself. So I, before I started this, I had a uh, VLC set down here as my default audio player, but you can see how easy it is. Uh, I think this is just kind of cool. You know, it's nothing you can do without a hockey. You can embed this in some of your tools. If you want to record a little audio file, then save it. Let me show you here. Right now I have it overwriting. It's just, just you know, whatever you name the file, but that should be the most recent one. Um, up here is where I gave it the name. And, and that's why I also separated these so I could double click here and change it and not have to worry about I replaced the extension. But let's say I wanted a WAV file. WAV, relaunch, Alt S. And now I'm recording this one and Alt T S. And now I'm recording this one and Alt. Looks like maybe I don't know if I hit that hotkey right there or what, but um, the, so there's the WAV file instead of the MP3 file. So you get the idea, right? Uh, I assume there's probably ways if we really you know, cared to. I tried changing a couple of these just to see. This one didn't seem to do anything. I was trying to see if I could change the samples uh, per second to lower it. Maybe it has to be at certain intervals because I just kind of made up a number. Maybe if I did half of that, it would work. And uh, again, I don't really care. I mean, it's audio files too. So, you know, they're not that big, generally speaking. I think it's a pretty cool script. And I hope you uh, enjoy that. It's... Amazing what you can do without a hotkey. I think we could also do something with a built-in Windows audio player recorder, but this one, to me, it was just a little geekier and a little cooler. Cheers.